Welcome back to my home bicycle workshop. With the season fast approaching, it's time for me to upgrade from my old beat up toolbox. This little guy has served me well for about 20 years, but now the plastic is breaking. It's overstuffed with tools, can't fit them all in it anymore. And I decided to go with the Park BX3 big blue box has wheels on the bottom, holds a lot more. I covered it in a separate video. So I'm going to get started on the process of removing all the tools from this box and putting them in this box in a way that I can work out of this box efficiently. One of the basic concepts of good tool organization of tools are easy to find and easy to use. Sounds like the same thing, but it's two different things. Um, you want to be able to access the tool that you need for the job that you're working on. And when you're working on that job, you want to have the tools that you use together on that job. So you wouldn't have to reach for a pair of pliers to pull a cable to tighten the tension on the cable, remove slack, and then have to open a drawer to get an Allen key out to tighten the anchor bolt. You'd want to be able to reach and access both those tools so you could use them at the same time. And when you were done using them, you'd put them back where they're easy to use. So on a tool board, you put your tools close to each other. So the Allen key, which gets used all the time, is right in the middle where it's very easy to find. The pliers, what I was talking about for pulling cables, removing slack that you use a lot, are right there next to the Allen wrench. In fact, on the tool board, the tool boards that I prefer, the tools are close at hand. You can reach across the whole tool board without taking a step, and you don't ever have to reach over your head. It might be good for a tall mechanic, not so good for a shorter mechanic. In a toolbox, you have basically a layered tool board arrangement. This toolbox, the park's new toolbox. So you actually have more room than a tool board gives you. Tools get layered on the pallets. So you should be able to have even more organization and put things in easier to find easier to use together locations. You can see from the instruction sheet that comes with the box how many compartments there are in the pallets on the inside the box. The hanging pallet in front, there's wings on the sides and on the back. Lots of places to put the tools. So you could obsess and go crazy. Analysis paralysis trying to figure out where to put every tool, the perfect place for the perfect assortment and access to your tools. But you could try something else too. You could actually, which I tried to prove the concept, you could take all the tools, remember I had them all laid out on the bench, you could take all those tools and you could just put them inside your box. Believe it or not, all the tools fit inside the bottom of the box. So it looks like a mess. It is a mess. It looks like you'd have a hard time finding things. Well, you would at first, but you could work this way. If you were new to tools, you weren't sure what you had, you were buying tools and getting into bicycle repair, you could start like this. You could work out of the box using one tool at a time and then placing that tool in the pallets where you thought was the best place to put it. And over time, you could end up with a nice organized case the way you like it to be organized. It's kind of a funny way to do it, but it could work for a beginner or somebody just getting into it. Might even work if you were in a hurry and you had a bunch of tools and you bought a new box and you wanted to get it on the road right away. In that case, you'd actually know what you're looking for and you'd probably have some idea where you wanted to put it too. So here it is, the toolbox. I'm gonna to open it up and show you how I set it up. The spring-loaded loaded latches are pretty cool because they open from the bottom up, which means that you don't have to unhook them as a separate step. And then inside there's spring-loaded latches, uh, struts, pneumatic struts that help lift the top because the top's pretty heavy with all the tools in it, as you'll see. So these are the wings that are going to fold out, but first you lift these out, the side wings, because there's Velcro here that hooks onto the Velcro here. So now we can unhook this, pull the side wings out, set them off like this, and the Velcro holds them to the side. 
And then the inside pallet holds a whole bunch of tools, including on the back. All the pallets have pockets in them in the back. And I'll show you right now that I use this pocket on the back for cone wrenches. I have a, a lot of cone wrenches, as I mentioned. Um, there's more here. And this pallet hangs on the front of the toolbox. So you have quite an array of accessible tools here, 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 here. And then if you look on the back, there's a pocket here. I'm using it for spare tubes, handlebar plugs. This one over here, I'm using for files. You can do a lot of things, hand machining with files. You can fix things. They're great things to have. I would recommend every mechanic have files. You can see that it's like a tool board because everything is easy to access. I've put the combination wrenches here, a few Allens. There's redundancy in tools. There's different places you can reach to get different tools. Sometimes you might like this type of Allen. Sometimes you might like this type of Allen or you might like this type of Allen. There's different Allens for fitting different situations. You'll see that I have um, commonly accessed tools like the uh, cable cutters, diagonal cutters, um, box knife, three-way, eight, nine, ten tool, tape measure. It's all here in the back. There's patches and glue up here. And then in the front, there's other, there's more tools you access all the time. Parks adjustable torque wrench. Uh, Torx and Allen key sets, channel lock pliers, chain pliers, the cassette tool and the chain whip side by side. You want to put your tools that you use together close to each other. Um, then if we keep if we keep going, this wing has sleeves. You can fit whatever you want to put in here. I've got a chain tool. I've got uh, uh, six inch metric rule, tire, tire irons, tire levers, pin tools. If you flip it over, this is where I keep all my spoke wrenches. I have a lot of different spoke wrenches because so many wheels today have proprietary uh, nipples that don't, you can't just use a standard spoke wrench. <laughs> I like to have the right spoke wrench for whatever wheel I'm working on. I never want to tell somebody I can't fix their wheel because I don't have the right wrench. Um, and then on this side, there's a pallet that I couldn't figure out when I first saw it. I didn't know what the pockets were for. But once um, I called Park Tool to explain that, that it's for the handles on the pliers um, and for their um, snap ring pliers. And I have the scissors in there. In the back, handlebar tape, <laughs> other types of tape, and zip ties. You can see that I'm using the spacious bottom of the box, mostly for oversized items. Yeah, I have a hammer in there, and I've got uh, headset tools. I've got suspension pump. And I've got a uh, Park's new oversized uh, pedal wrench. And I've got a small parts box in there so that I can have things that I need to get at, small things that would otherwise get lost in there, uh, easy access. Things like uh, valve extenders, uh, shock pump adapters. Um, I even have uh, a couple of lubes I don't want to spill in the box protected in, inside there. It, once you've used the toolbox and set a toolbox up, you get a hang for where you keep things. It makes it easy wor easier working on things. Um, my toolbox is is got my tools, the tools that I use in it. Uh, your toolbox should have the tools that are, that are right for you, your skills as a mechanic, and also um, the bikes that you like to work on. Those are the two things, how you figure out what to put in a toolbox. Going over my tools, I realized that some of the tools were worn out, some of the sets were incomplete, and I needed a few new tools because bicycles keep changing, parts keep coming out, and ideally, you won't be in a situation where you can't fix what you run into on your in your travels, um, especially if you're working on not just your own bike, where it's easy to, to know what you're going to need. When you fix other people's bikes, you just never know what you might run into. 
So what I did is I looked through the uh, latest tool catalogs and Park Tool has some nice new tools and I placed an order. Some of the tools that is a new Park hammer that I really like that has a ball peen end on one end and a rubber mallet on the other end. So it's two hammers in one. You don't have to carry separate. You can do multiple tasks with one hammer. It's nicely designed and it's not uh, too heavy. So it has a nice heft to it. You don't want too heavy a hammer. You don't need one on bicycle work. Um, some of the new Park tools are machined aluminum designed to last forever. This is a really nice three-way four, five, six Allen wrench. Feels great in the hand. You can apply pl plenty, of, plenty of pressure and this one is really a nice tool made to last. Um, similarly, their new screwdrivers are pretty impressive. Machined aluminum, handles, knurled, shafts, designed to do the job, fit right. It's just a beautiful tool. Nice rubber so that it sits nice on the bench and it's nice in the hand. There's the Phillips. And I needed some spoke wrenches. I have a million spoke wrenches. <laughs> Not exactly, but I have a lot and I keep buying more. So I purchased more spoke wrenches. If spoke wrenches, they don't usually wear out. Um, the vinyl can wear on the handles. And then for internal inside rims, you reach in to tighten the different size nipples. This is a nice tool. Uh, Instead of an aluminum handle, it has nylon, which is fine, but it has the three different sizes <clears throat> most likely to run into. In here is a pretty cool pick set. Magnets on the ends and different tips, which can come in really hand handy for picking at things, pulling things out. Maybe you got a... Um, Cable stuck in an STI brake uh, shift lever. Similar tools, a really nice set of uh, snap ring pliers so that you can handle any snap ring you might run into. I got an even larger pedal wrench now that I have a toolbox that can handle it. Got a larger diameter handle and it's longer overall, so you can apply even more leverage. Park's new uh, torque wrench is adjustable, so you can set four, 4.5, 6, and 5.5 and 5, all in the same tool, and the most common sizes store in the end cap. That's a handy tool to have, you use it all the time. And then Park has a line of nice uh, diagonal cutters, needle nose pliers, um, cable crimps, nice pair of shop scissors. These are really thick vinyl handles. Feels great in the hand and uh, lets you apply more leverage for cutting tough materials. Pin tools, rolled fashion cups. These are nice, they come in handy. Well, they're adjustable pin tools. Then I splurged and got a new combination wrench set because I couldn't resist. Beautiful set, vinyl handles, really nice chrome plating. It's nice to have a complete set. All the same. Likewise, I ordered a full set of cone wrenches. Cone wrenches, the jaws can actually wear over time. You can't have enough cone wrenches sometimes. So now I have a complete new set of cone wrenches. And I got Park's new 
cassette lock ring remover, which is a really handy tool to have. The head's replaceable, although I doubt you'd, you would wear it out. This lets you remove the lock ring without having to use two, two tools for getting cassettes off, tightening cassettes, and it'll work on some disc brakes. I wanted to show you the wrench sets all laid out. You can see that the combination wrench set is a full set. So it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You don't always get all those when you buy a wrench set. Um, for bicycle work, you need all those. So if you buy a set that's missing like the 17, you might run into kickstands you can't tighten on bikes. Or if you buy a set that doesn't have a 6, you might not be able to work on disc brakes. Um, the cone wrench set, I said before, you can't have too many cone wrenches. What I uh, meant was you often use cone wrenches in pairs, one on one side, one on the other side. So you often need duplicate wrenches. So this is a full set. It goes 28, 26, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. So that's a lot of wrenches. And it's even it's not even enough because you need duplicates of most of these sizes on some hubs. So you, I will have more than this. But this is a nice new set, all matching with new jaws. Then I wanted to show you this tool. One of the advantages of this particular design is that you don't even have to take the quick release off when you work on it. It'll slip right over most quick releases. So it saves you time not having to remove the quick release to access the lock ring.